Okay, this is a 2004 Mercedes E-Class. Beautiful car, except for a small problem. The owner has a trailer. The trailer came off the hitch. He's got this rip in the door. See that it's ripped right through? Got a rip right here. So we're going to have to fix that tear in the door, blend in the paint. There's a couple ways to approach fixing this tear. This car was purchased in Germany by the owner and he brought it back to the United States, which means the door is full of reinforcements, airbags, and uh, very difficult to get to this lower corner of the door. You can see there's a little crease here that I've highlighted in white that I need to take care of. It goes on this body line here and it's creased right here on the door just a little bit. I don't want to risk ruining the interior panels and I don't want to uh, disrupt all of the airbag systems that are inside the store because it is loaded. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to cut a line. I'm going to use a 1 8 inch wheel on a die grinder. I'm going to cut a little slit there just to relieve the stress. This, uh, this, the stress is out, out to here. The circle, if it's hard to see, but the dent is actually about that big. Uh, but the problem is all this metal. You can't shriek this metal. This metal is past its yield point, which means it's stretched past the ability for it to shrink back. Most of the metal over here, when, they heat, when you heat it up or, or uh, use a shrinking dolly, will go back into the shape. But this has got to be cut, and I've got to relieve some of the stress here, spe specifically right here, the stress here and the stress here. This will never be able to be to be flat again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this door down, get it flat, get it prepared, and once I get to that point I'll show you how I'm going to continue. So here's the finished repair. It's been stitch welded. I had a, a cut this way and a cut this way. Stitch welded it shut, filled it in with lead. If you want to use, uh, learn how to use body lead, I have a video about using body lead. Now all this is going to take is a little coat of spot putty just to even out the paint. I'll sand this down, get it nice and flat, and then I'll show you how to do the paint part. Here's the door ready to paint. I put down a layer of the base coat and I checked it to make sure it was extremely flat. Perfection is the key here. And I'm ready to paint. You can notice I got water on the floor. It's running. And here's a little painter's trick for you. If you before you paint, you could take a towel, spray a little bit of the color on there. And I use that as a tack cloth. The color and the paint will sort of prep the surface. All you do is just wipe it down. And now I'm going to get ready to spray. Now what I'm going to do is, I have to blend in up here. So I'm only going to, the clear has to go up into here. And I'll show you how to blend out that line. But, I only want to, I only want to paint up to here and let it sort of dust up into here because the clear is going to go up in here. I don't want a hard break where the color is going to cross. Okay? We'll get back to that after I paint. Okay, I have down one light coat of color here and it's nice and even all the way across. You can see coming up here that I only slightly went into the area where I'm going to put the clear. Slightly. This is the first first uh, medium coat. I'll put on one more medium coat and then I will uh, put the clear on. I have two medium wet coats on here right now, but I'm going to put at least four because I want to color sand this, polish it so it matches the rest of the car, and I want to make sure I blend out the part where it, it uh, blends into the door. So I'm going to show you how I put on, uh, this is going to be the third medium wet coat, and watch how I sneak up on the, the blended part. It. And here's the finished uh, finish panel. Four coats of clear on there. It's, I'll try and get a picture of this, maybe I won't. You can see I have a very, very light coat up onto the edge here where it blends in. Now I'll wait for that to dry, 24 hours, color, sand, and polish. 
Now the last thing I have to do is polish out the line where the clear met the tape. If you look at the paint surface here, I have the surface of the car that was existing, surface on the door, and what I did is I, I put tape here, so what I have, I'm going to exaggerate this, so I have a coat of clear that goes like this. Here's the existing clear that was on the car. Here's the coat of clear I put, and this is what would have been where the tape was, masking tape. Now, I don't want to sand this with a block, because if you start sanding this right here, you run a very good chance of sanding through this, and if you sand through that, you'll get into the color and you completely ruin the door. I'm going to show you how to make a tool. This tool is, what it enables you to do is shave off a micron maybe a half a micron of clear at a time, about an inch long. So what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to taper this back. What I eventually want to end up with is I want to taper this down to nothing. Zero microns here, maybe three to four microns there. And I'm not going to do it all at once. This tool, you just take it on the shave, it's going to shave like this, I'm going to shave it down, and we'll shave it down at an angle. Once you get to this point where this is down to nothing, you can take this and even this off a little bit like that and then you hit it with some thousand grit sandpaper right around here and then a little bit over here you'll sand it so you sand a little bit here and the sand will, sanding will go just like this and then you, all you have to do is polish that with a buffing wheel and it'll be virtually invisible this is how you make the tool you can take a razor blade brand new razor blade Take the paper off a brand new single edge razor blade. Put a couple marks on there so you know what the top of the razor blade is. Now, what I'm going to do is, I have a block, sanding block, with some 400 grit sandpaper on there. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold the top, so the top is up, okay, and I'm going to go like this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag this one direction. Just keep going one direction like this, several times. I'm holding it, I'm actually filing my fingernail a little bit, but I'm, I'm just going to keep going like this. One direction. Okay? Keep going just like that. I'm going to say you have to do it about maybe 10, 10 to 20 times. You're not going to make it worse by going more, so let's say 15 to 20. So I, I'll, I'll go to 20 here. You don't have to count, it's not that critical, but once you start seeing an even layer of the, the sanding, you know you've got what you need, okay? And what that essentially does is, now I have the top of this razor blade, okay? If you were to look at the edge of this razor blade, it's sharp, but by sanding in that direction, I've created an extremely small, maybe half a micron, burr on the edge of this blade. Okay, you can already see I have this part already done. This is done with the top side down, razor blade bent this way, and this is how you do this. The motion is just like this, very light, very slow. Let's go just like this, scraping right along that line, very slow, just like this. Shaving off half a micron at a time, right along that line until you get it tapered, until it eventually gets blend it down like that, hit it with some 600 and 1000 grit sandpaper and I'll polish the whole thing. I'll hit the bottom even off the orange peel on the bottom of the door, polish it, finish it, and it'll be done. Here's the finish repair. I just finished polishing, sanding and polishing the whole thing. Came out pretty good. Always. Gotta make sure it's perfect. All the way up, the blend in. Oh, beautiful car, beautiful car. End of that project.